Goose, you're so English. You're so English. Never had sushi at all. It's good. My, my boy, my little boy loves sushi. So first and foremost, we're gonna we're gonna make a. This is an FFA tier list here. Yeah? An FFA tier list. All right. Now, this video is brought to you by Mango Loco Monster. Absolutely gorgeous. Hold on. Absolutely delish. Oh goodness, even even sounds amazing. Smells amazing. Tastes amazing too. Alrighty. <coughs> this is FFA Civ tier list. So over the past couple of, uh, maybe the past week, I've played a bunch of FFA. Now my win ratio is not necessarily the highest. I've had a lot of uh, getting absolutely murked by a bunch of dudes because... I think my first 10 games that I went into, I played with my Nick Liquid Demo. And um, imagine, imagine I was a pile of poop, right? And about five of the players in the game were flies. And they just stuck to me from minute one. So if you've been watching the stream at all recently, there's definitely been quite a bit of, uh, you know, teaming going on just based on names or people figuring out that you're a conqueror in the chat, so definitely, definitely brutal. Alrighty, alrighty. But, then I went with the whole Chinese name Meta, and we got away with it for a bit. We got away with it for a bit, but after playing a bit of FFA, I'll, I'll start off, I'll start off. There's definitely some civs that are obviously very good in FFA, and there's some civs that are less good, but I think even my quote-unquote worst civs can still get something done. Um, I actually really like the whole you get a guy's king and you're plus 50 pop and all that. That, that feels nice. That feels nice. Alright. <clears throat> I'll basically do it left to right because that just feels solid. Regular China. Boom. S tier. They are, uh, they are amazing. They have uh, some of the best late game stuff uh, possible. Uh, they also can barbican rush. Uh, initial resources. You can you can really ruin your next door neighbor's game. You know, right from the get go. Um, they boom fast. They boom efficiently. You have access to pagodas as well with minimal relics, like three pagodas, which is getting you three hundred gold per minute. And then the sixty-two food and sixty-two wood per minute, and then twenty-five stone each. So just with a handful of Pagodas, like three, you can establish yourself 750 resources per minute, which is, you know, in terms of just pure resource per minute, one Pagoda is the same as one Regnitz uh, Tithe Barnes Relic, so very solid, except you just get more stone. So fantastic. Uh, Nesta Bees, amazing. Palace Guards, they have extra health. And you can get the Wan Dynasty, so they're giga fast as well. So you don't need to rely on like a cavalry army, which you normally do in FFA. But your end game comp can be Palace Guards, Hand Cannoneers, because they have extra range, Nesta Bees, Bombards, and you're just absolutely cooking. And you have great keeps as well. And that really good food saturation with your uh, granaries. And then top it all off. You have a big, big Great Walled Gatehouse to keep it all safe. That big vision as well that you can get from that landmark, that Imperial Palace, I actually think that's giga, giga useful for figuring out where villages are of everybody. So yeah, uh, chi China might be actually its own tier altogether of S+, plus, but bear with me, bear with me. All right, Abbasid. I think Abbasid's very solid if they can get a game rolling. I'm probably going to put Abbasid on A tier. I think they have a very decent late game comp. Very decent late game comp. And you can get Golden Age 3, which means like faster production speed and all that as well. Good gather rates. They have amazing trade if they can get it. But trade, honestly, a lot of the map layouts are pretty damn tricky. Pretty damn tricky. 
Oh yeah, also forgot to mention that China have access to like eight landmarks, right? Because you can get every landmark, basically. It's amazing. So getting sniped is hard. And Abba said the total opposite. You have to be very careful about your first landmark placement. Okay. Getting getting in the middle of the map or whatever, like China can do that. So you have to be very careful. But Abbasid, like your camels, camel riders, late game comp, very good. Eco, very good. Yeah, I actually quite like them. Uh, you also have access to Culverin, which are one of the best anti-siege in the game. So you always have to take into account that kind of stuff. Um, Abbasid, the only thing they have to worry about is... If you are in a corner with somebody else, that can be problematic. But once the game gets going, I actually think they're solid. Really solid. Good late game comp as well with the uh, Culverin. And just... You also have to think about the fact that you can have like that plus 50 pop. You have mass camel raiders. Mass camel riders. And then you can mix in some lancers if you want or anything like that. Hand cannoneers obviously as well. You actually have this comp that's very, very solid against mass cav. Which... In FFA, given that a lot of king sniping can happen, a lot of like mobility is really good because the map's so big, you having the king of the cav is, is actually quite prominent. English. I'm going to put them on A tier as well. I think English is solid. Um, I'll, I'll talk about landmarks for quite a few of these civs as well. Like, luckily for China and Abbasid, you can pretty much get, well, you can get everything. I think China's main strength is ending up with Wan Dynasty. So if you do want to get the Spirit Way eventually, which, honestly, Dynasty units, for the most part, I say they're not worth going in your late game comp. Like, Fire Lancers are actually tragically bad. Tragically. I, they're terrible. It's actually far better to make regular Horsemen, I feel, because regular Horsemen, if you have one Dynasty, 2.13 speed. Amazing. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Anyway, English. I like starting off with Abia Kings. It's just kind of nice. Like, Council Hall, unless you really want to rush somebody out of the game, but, you know, in an FA, you can talk about, like, being in an hour-long game. Abbey of Kings is nice, and if you do get some fights later on with your hand cannoneers or wing guard rangers and stuff, having a king to heal them up on the go is actually quite pleasant. Really good trebs. Access to the wind guard stuff, specifically wind guard rangers, really good in FFA, I think, but trebs, wind guard rangers... It feels just solid to be English. And having the network of castles as well to stop it all off. Yeah, I definitely don't mind being English in FFA. They feel good. Also, you've always got to remember this. Like, enclosures. So good. So good. Now, I might do some rearranging. Just because I don't know exactly where I'm going to splat them. But French, I'm going to put them as B. French's saving grace in FFA. Guildhall. It's it's their saving grace, I feel. If they didn't have Guildhall, they might literally be way, way lower. But Guildhall helps a lot for those spicy situations, be it for like gold or stone. Producing units, they're great. French actually have a surprisingly good late game with the fact that they can make a lot of knights. Some of the best knights in the game. A lot of horsemen, super cheap. A lot of arbs, best best crossbows in the game. And the hand cannons, they can make hand cannons. And the Red Palace, obviously making everything very hard to raid. Everything. But I, I, I would say, I would say um, that French do struggle against some of the mega armies, you know. The mega armies, they do struggle. Because not going for the age 4 landmark, the other one, uh, the College of Artillery, you don't have access to Cools. And if you're on Spring Olds and stuff, you're against, like, let's say, Great Bombards or Sushi Bombards or something like that, you're, you're you know, the, the amount of AoE that you actually have in your army available does lack. But... French, I'll, I'll put them there for now. I might change it a little bit. In fact, in fact, I already kind of want to change it a little bit. But we'll... Well, I'll, I'll stick with it for now. No, I'm changing it already. Hatry B. 
I would have put Hatery higher. But Hatery also struggles with a few things, but it, it doesn't always line up like this. Like Hatery, some of their biggest downsides in FFA are the fact that they don't have the best cav. Like all, all their all their attributes late game point to infantry, like faster infantry, better men at arms. You have good tower defense and cheaper outposts and what have you, and like the relic situation. You also like one one really nice thing about FFA is the fact that landmarks are not linear like in one v one. Like there's there's absolutely times and places where it's gorgeous to go the other landmark so one thing with hatery that i think is very very good l's back <laughs> and obviously your initial power spike of getting into late game is slower because if you go for the swabia which is far more normal in 1v1 you can rely on one tc you get to swabia you're basically on like three four tc right and cheaper but getting the l's back and if you are in the middle of the map say if there's like one or three sacred sites which is quite common having an L's back there and getting the keep set up you don't need to take the sacred sites right there and then but being in the middle is usually where a lot of the relics tend to be but hey tree you can absolutely get messed up by the fact that if you don't get the relics your economy isn't as good but also the relics help so much so much for those late game situations for hey tree because they don't have any other way to get like tons of gold and again, their late game army isn't the best. They can have, if you have like keeps and the L's back and towers with emplacements and get lots of stone, you can be so hard to punish. But your actual army isn't the best. You have culverins, which help a lot with the tower defense and stuff. But I, I've had games with Hatree that go very well, where I get like five relics and I'm like, boom, 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 pop them up, pop them down, all near my L's back. I get the sights and I'm, you know, you can 1v2. Uh, but the army itself, not the best. Not the best. Mongol. Boom. Mongol. Super difficult. Super difficult. I've actually yet to really have true success in FFA. Just given that it's so uh, chaotic. Like, Mongol. Even when I... Th I, I think you have to be so risky with Mongol. Like, I've, I've had games where I set up a trade... And I get, like, a nice trade post, and I'm trading, you know? But if one guy picks a fight with you early on, oh, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You might be able to win that fight, but while that's happening, a lot of people are getting ahead. And in FFA, there's kind of this... Almost this hidden rule of don't poke a bear unless you're gonna... Unless you've got a freaking bazooka, and you're gonna just fly out. So I've, I've had games with Mongol where I get up my trade, a guy picks a fight with me, it's rough... And then some Giga Titan comes along because I have no walls. They come and snipe my king. It's brutal. Mongol's rough because it doesn't have walls. And tech-wise, like landmark-wise, going for a silver tree feels kind of like... Because if you are trading, you want like three, four, five markets. So the silver tree is basically like two or 1.5 and cheaper, which is okay, but... Coral tie, having the coral tie in as many places as you want it, it's also brutal. Like, Mongol starts thriving when they have, like, let's say you get some pop early on, some extra pop from killing a king. A really good trade route. Tons of towers absolutely everywhere, cannon towers. And you get all the giga upgrades where you have, like, the longest range spring olds, good mangoes, all that stuff. But Mongol relies on the stars truly, truly aligning. It's it's quite it's it's hard it's hard. Roos is Roos is good actually. Roos is good. You're almost guaranteed to get 500 bounty with Roos. I think overall the Roos army is just a solid one. Cheaper siege, good spring olds, good bombards, good you know cheaper streltsy. Quite safe. And quite quick to boom. Can get some stuff done early on. Just a good sieve. Like, Roos will almost never be bad, no matter where you put them. So I, I do like Roos. Delhi is an interesting one. 
Delhi's an interesting one. I don't think they're as bad as I first thought. I, I might genuinely put Delhi above French. But would I? I almost want to make another tier. Because <laughs> I'll... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to put them above French here. But they're also a sieve that you kind of need things to work out. Some advantages for Delhi are the fact that you don't need to spend gold on any upgrades. That's amazing. I think also it's kind of highly preferred if you build in the middle so you can grab some relics nice and early. If it's a one sacred site map, that slows you down a lot. Like, I've noticed that some ways to get ahead with Delhi is if there's three sacred sites, you take two. You don't threaten the third one. Because otherwise, you know, people start looking at you. you. You end up in the sniper scopes. But I tell you what, their, their late game army, like if you... So I, I, I'll just go into detail about HRA landmarks. Like, I think Arkans a really good landmark always. The mine walk is, it's, it's okay. And there are unique upgrades that can make your knights have two extra armor. And your horsemen and spears get two extra melee armor but in those later game skirmishes where you're against real big dogs is two armor going to save your dudes no it's it's almost I, I class it as better to have the arkham with the towers around you know and get relics and that's like safe gold safe food and then the trickle from the uh, tithe barns as well it's just good Delhi, I think, going for the Tower of Victory early on. Absolutely a no-brainer. Dome of Faith t feels to me like... Why would you give up having better hand cannons later on? Like, I I'm very much a late-game focus. So, yeah, with, with English, it's like Abbey of Kings. Um, either of the next landmarks is fine, honestly. It's not a big deal on the next one. White Tower is always nice having to keep, but... If you need a second TC because you feel quite free, that's okay. And then the wing guard, very good. Um, HRE, L's back being your third or your, your last final landmark. Delhi, uh, Tower of Victory. The, third, the second one, like Compound or House of Learning. I've been a House of Learning guy just because I like getting all those upgrades. But having cheaper keeps, absolutely great as well because... I've had games with Delhi where I get like 15 keeps, quite literally, and they're all like surrounded by farms and stuff late game. And then the last one, I think the hand cannon elephants are amazing. Like the, the Delhi army, if you can get it, it's very gold heavy, like mass elephants, and it's very slow. But if it ends up in a game where you're like defending your lamp or the middle, and you get the sacred sites, then it's amazing. Mally Ann. I think, I think. I might put Malian up here, you know? I think Malian's alright. And I, it, it, it took me a bit of thinking to think about where I would put Malian. Just because I was like, having some pit mines is always pleasant. Like, that's quite a bit of gold extra. Then you have those cows. That's like 1,000 food a minute. With no pop, by the way. No pop is a big deal. And having Sofa be really powerful at H3. Like, you can definitely get some king sniping going on. You have access to stone walls late game. You have a very hard counter specific army. Because you can even go for that, that Griot Barra H4 landmark to snipe down siege stuff faster. I actually like the Fort of the Huntress better, though, just because... If you do get late game, you get a lot of those invisible hand cannon units, and they do double damage first strike. I think that's really powerful. But I, I, I do think Malian in general, um, not the best army, but they do have Culverin. And so far, you can get like increases the speed of your infantry around as well. Yeah, I, I think they're not bad. Not bad. Kind of fall into a similar like. Stars have to align for you a bit, but definitely better than like a French, I'd say. Even though French can work as well, 
again, all these sibs can potentially work. You just have to get fortunate. Because even China can get messed up, you know, early on. But mm, it's always nice having that trickle income that's almost guaranteed. Like Malian, Malian's not the same as Hatri, where Hatri, if you end up with no relics, that sucks, you know. Then then Hatri might drop to literally D tier. Uh, but yeah, I, I quite like where Malian is. They feel like a nice middle sieve. Ottoman. I'm going to put Ottoman in A tier. I haven't had the super privilege of being able to play a lot of Ottoman so far in FFA, but they're scary, man. One of the scariest things to go up against, like a mass, mass great bombard army. They have... Maybe they're even S tier, actually. I mean, it's a very scary army. Janissaries fire super fast. They're kings of killing calf. They have Sipahi. Actually, maybe they are S tier. Are they? They very well could be, actually. If left alone. I'll, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I think they are that good. I do. Janissaries Sipahi. I mean, the Sipahi are an amazing unit to have, and they don't cost gold. Very good as well. Yeah, Estia, Estia. They've got... Yeah, they've got to be. They've got to be. Like, they have also these free units, which the longer the game goes, it's, it's nice. It's nice. Great Bombage, Janissary, Sippy. Yeah, that's all you need to say. S <laughs> tier and FFA. Granted, if you go up against certain armies, it can get tricky, but if you're if you're in a fight with a, in like a 45 minute game, you're against an Ottoman, you're not exactly going to be like, oh yeah, he's a weak sieve. Very good. I, I would say landmark-wise, the berry one. Because the trade one, it's okay, but... If you max it out with 10 traders, that's 10 pop for 240 gold a minute. It's not that much. It's not that good, actually. Though, it could maybe save you in dark times. It depends. It depends. I, I do like the berry one just because. <laughs> but maybe maybe the trader one is good, actually. Third landmark. I think having the two extra Vizier points could be useful. But sleeping... And it also depends what is your position. Because if you get the two extra Vizier points with that um, one that isn't the armory. I have even forgot its name. I, I barely make it. But if you go for that one and you actually have trade available, then you might not go for the university landmark. You might actually go for the sea castle thing because then it doesn't really matter like having that armory having the armory is so much better if you get the university but if you go for the other two because you've got trade available then that those free bombards you're basically having really good trade to get more bombards so there's also that kind of switcheroo depending on the situation it can definitely help out alright alright Iabid I think Iabid Ibid's actually better than I thought it would be. But still, it's, it's not a China. <laughs> I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Iabid here. And Iabid was a bit f Iabid was actually very fun for trying to figure out what landmarks to go. Because you're not like Abbasid where you can go everything. It's very much like what do you go? Like, and, and obviously the later you get the tech, the better the tech is. So like the the villager one, it's like three villagers initially and 50 on your berries. And then it's like eight villagers and 100 on the berries. And then it's 10 villagers and 10% gather rates. And everything at the Imperial one feels like you want it, right? It feels good. But what I've, what I tend to find with Iabid, if I really go late game and when it's actually worked out for me. I like the villager one first. And it feels like a bit of a waste, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to it. The second one I like to get is the dervish one. The, the extra healing is actually very handy with the bonus healing. And then the last one is the 20% health on, sh on buildings. And I've been plonking them on the siege. And then I have 
this siege lineup, and this is this is the real kicker with Ayabid. You have lots of those Manjaniks, which you can put them all on fire mode, and you can literally have like 30, 40 of them, depending on your pop. And then you also have Culverin, aka you're keeping those alive in these fights. And the AoE damage is insane. And your mangoes with the upgrades have like 190 health or something, so they're very hard to snipe. Because you get like from the Atabeg the plus 20%, and then you get that siege upgrade. I forgot how much it gives you exactly. Let's check. Uh, so the siege upgrade is it's like um, plus 20% as well. So your siege end up with 40% extra health with the Atabeg and that. Definitely worth thinking about. So where is that? Uh, so that goes up to 4 Dervish and 30%. So I mean, like, you get the... Th turns on permanently. Actually, that's quite nice as well. Permanent healing. That could also be quite good. Uh, and what was the... So the Atabeg one. Maybe, maybe I'll... Maybe, maybe for Atabeg as that one. And then the Dervish for heat, for permanent AoE healing might be cool. I mean, this this is the fun thing about FFA. There's things that you... It's, it's tricky to actually think about. Like, there's there's definitely some stuff where I'm like... Uh, getting, getting seven... Desert Raiders every two minutes. It's not worth uh, the blacksmith. Like the blacksmith, these two military wings just don't really come into it for me. It's about which order do I do the other three. But yeah, very interesting, I would say. Um. So yeah, Ibid's Ibid's fun. Ibid's fun. They have the weakness of two landmarks, but Byzantine. Now, Byzantine is something that I think is absolutely giga-strong in 1v1. But in FFA, the fact that you don't have a regular knight is actually so bad for you. Now, you... And maybe I'll start playing differently with them in FFA. Maybe I'll go for, like, this mass limiting a approach, but... Infantry is just worse than cav in ffa but i mean they are fast i think i'll go for a different approach in the future but i'm gonna put them here i just it's been very hard for me to make them work now some stuff that is good for byzantine having late game oil be a resource and not just gold is actually quite handy for whipping out like nest of bees and stuff because i i do think I have been playing, the way I've been trying Byzantine is Hippodrome. Like the, the Grand Winery is great for that extra oil and stuff, but it's also like you're gonna, late game you can potentially get to a spot where you've got like 70 villagers on orchards, like oil's not gonna be an issue. So having that little extra trickle or relics there, it's not that big a deal, and that made me want to go into Cav, and I've been stuck getting Cataphracts, but then like, I get 20 Cataphracts which are really expensive. And then like 35 Royal Knights turn up and just bat me down. And I'm like, oh crap, that sucks. Um, so maybe I'll start actually switching it up a bit. Because I felt very much going Hippodrome into the Cistern of all things. Because I do think the free units, even though it's super good in 1v1, in FFA sometimes I like to pick and choose what I make instead. I'm trying to buff up my Cav, but... It's not been working out, but I still think the foreign the foreign academy at the start is the best thing you can make. I do. I think that's buffing up all your units entirely. But maybe maybe I'll change how I approach Byzantine. Getting limited because they're so fast. Because yeah, cataphracts being one eighty food, one fifty gold, and not having charge, and being one fifty speed, they basically feel like not as good knights, which definitely. Yeah, it doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. Alrighty, Japan. I've been very, very curious how to play Japan. I think I'm going to put them here. I do. I had a game yesterday against Japan. It was me as French, there was a Chinese player. And there was a Japanese guy. And it ended up, it was a one hour and a half game. Like, super long. And we all had, like, I think I had 300 supply. But I was out of gold. I was relying on my guild hall. It was messy. 
there was a Japanese guy that he still had some gold left, and there was a, uh, a Chinese guy that had very little left as well. But the Japanese guy ended up with this army of loads of Azutsu. Now, obviously, the longer the game goes, you get an Azutsu, and you get like two free per minute, basically. That helps. If you get an army of like 70 Azutsu, that's good, that's good. And you get the hand cannons as well, get the Yumi Bannerman to buff them. Actually, maybe they're eight. Maybe they're eight tier. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking here, I'm thinking, would I prefer Japan or HRE in FFA? They're going up to they're going up to A tier. I, I, I'm I'm thinking about it. Like the first landmark's a bit like whatever, right? It's a bit whatever. I, I think you go for the storehouse almost almost as a must because getting Shinobi in an FA it's it's kind of like whatever, right? So the Kura storehouse that gives you a bunch of farms, but then it's seventy five wood per minute. That can be useful. I've definitely had some FAs where wood becomes an issue. But Every real resource becomes an issue. They have access to four Yashiros, six with the Imperial upgrade. Now, I would 100% say that even though in 1v1 you put them on a few military buildings, maybe some on forges, in FFA, gold is such an issue. Now, there's some maps that might be absolutely sprinkled with gold, but six Yashiros in forges in, in a safe spot, that's what. 450 gold per minute, just like that. There have also been games where people have gone for the Monk landmark and realizing that gold is sparse. Now, this, this absolutely takes you kind of navigating the map a little bit and finding out what the situation is. By playing against a Japanese guy that literally made 50 monks, and for those that don't know, monks generate gold per minute. I think it's like 25 gold per minute. It's, it's not a hell of a lot, but if you have 50 <laughs> and you just took them away somewhere, you know, that's, you're talking 1250 gold per minute. And it's an investment for sure. They take like. Each monk takes like four minutes to pay off, I think, or something like that. But it's definitely something to consider. Then you don't have the Yashiros. You can still get relics. But it costs supply. Definitely fun. Some of Japan's weakness, if you will does take them a while to get there to where you really want to be but also the samurai like mounted samurai running around the map especially with the bannerman buff they're absolutely some of the better knights in the game so yeah japan they have to be here uh jean i'm gonna put uh probably here yeah she she's she's a nice mid-tier civ i'm not scared of her but I'm also like, I know I need to respect. She's almost certainly going to get eight, uh, level 4, which is scary. And she buffs up an army. In fact, hold on. She can get sniped so easy in FFA. Oh, man, that's going to be... Oh, that's so annoying. You know what? You're going down there, Jean. In fact, I'm put, you're, you're here with French, mate. You're here with French. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I was just thinking, I'm not scared of Jean, but if I get Jean, I'm a bit worried about just getting sniped out of the game. Like, mass bombards galore, you know. Oh, yeah, that's brutal, actually. Free can You do get free cannons, and I tell you what, I think in FFA, you might even go for the... the age 4 one that's not Red Palace, maybe? Just because you can uh, consecrate it and get cheaper calves and better calves might be a play. So there's definitely some stuff to play around with. Guild Hall, I still think, is absolute the goat. Definitely interesting. All right, all right. Order and Zushi left. This is... This is the maybe the biggest surprise to me in FFA so far. Order is really good in FFA, man. It's really good. I, I, every time I've randomed and got order, I've been very happy. I've been very happy. You have the literal gods of knights. Now, granted, they are expensive, but the, the pop cap limit? 
absolutely frees up order so damn much. Frees them up so damn much. It's unreal. Like, the constraint in 1v1 is the fact that you're not the best. Uh, like, your eco's kind of bad early on. But, but, if you can survive with order, get some relics, which you absolutely should be able to. Like, I've had games with order where I get a good, yeah, four, four or so relics. And granted, there's like 11 on the map in FFA, I think. So, even being brazen about taking the middle, I think it's actually really good. Really good. Now, it does rely on relics. It, it really does, but... Those knights that you're able to proper snipe down things as well, kings and stuff. You have access to the culverin. Same stuff with HRE. Like the the reason that order is so much better than HRE in FFA is the fact that knights are significantly better. Like your your late game is just stronger than F, than HRE. Like if you've got a bunch of HRE dudes with maces and you're like frick yeah, and then you got order knights charging you, it is literally. It is literally that scene from Lord of the Rings with the horses charging and then freaking elephants come and donk them, you know? Like, it's 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 brutal. It's brutal. You, you always kind of think to yourself, like, oh, these maces will help out, right? Against these charging knights. And you got to remember, like, um, there's some stuff that you don't often get to truly think about in Solo, but those, those knights as well. So I can't remember the exact stats. They have... They have something like 500-odd health, I think. And then they take 25% less damage while charging as well. And you, you got you got to remember, like... Mobility is absolutely king in these late-game situations. Being able to be there, 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 there. Super damn good. Um, now, even though Mindwalk does unlock some very decent upgrades... Again, Men at Arms, are you going to be making those in FFA? Most likely not, I would say. Most likely not. 552 health with the upgrade. I mean, those are kings. Bolts, 20 extra damage against Siege. Are you going to be making crossbows in FFA? I mean, your, your dragon hand cannon is as well. Those are god tier. God tier. And then you've got the, uh, the lance knight. Are you going to be making those in FFA? I mean, those can be absolutely situational. All these things can be situational. For sure. But is it... Not necessary. I've actually been playing with the Arkan again, just to boost my income a bit. Because, again, I've been very much about... Um, I've not been about the infantry so much in FFA. Unless I'm like China and Zushi, just because they're so fast. So yeah, order. and uh, Landmark-wise, yeah, Arkan I like, Regnitz I like, and then Elsback Palace I like. Again, Elsback minus 33% damage to all your buildings in the influence and it's one of those things if you just plonk like a tc next to them and spread the influence out everywhere it's on everything like that that thing spreads very very nicely it's super cool it's not just limited to just around the l's back it spreads you just have to make some extra buildings like a, a tc to link things up and i say just a tc it's ffa Zushi. Zushi's also a beast, man. It's a beast. Zushi's got to be up there. Super strong. Palace guards, amazing. You have access to... Like, if you hit late game and you get... You get Zushi. And you're like, AoE bombards with 11 range. Boo! Bang it. You can get some grenadiers as well, just to help out. They get extra range, makes them a bit better. But the palace guards, and you can get all the landmarks again. It's amazing. What else do they have that feels really good? Oh, Imperial Guards and Wan Raiders can absolutely come online as well. You can have good eco. Pagodas as well. I think Pagodas are just amazing. Um, Zushi, I would definitely put as S tier. I, I can't not. I can't not. Like the weakness of the Imperial Guard is the fact that... What is it? Is it three range armor? It's like die a bit easier to hand cannons and stuff but most things do but they, they have a lot of health and I, I've noticed like a lot of Zushi players as well they don't even go for like this giga boom early on they just go with like a lot of palace guards and go snipe people out and get a good pop lead 
Yeah, I've got I've got to put I've got to put Zushi pretty damn high. Um, but this also this think about it from like left to right. I do think China, regular China to me feels like the king of FFA. And I say this because their palace guards are better than Zushi palace guards with max upgrades. They have 30 extra health, but that equates to a bit higher because that 20% from the elite army tactics. So they end up with like 252 against like 216. The Zushi ones can get plus three extra damage. You can get even more health on these palace cards. They add up to 277, I think, with Ming Dynasty. But I love Wan Dynasty, just because then they're like 15% faster, 252 health. Like you can actually fight against HRE men at arms, for example. You're just faster. Clock Tower constantly produce bombards, Nesta Bees. Nesta Bees are amazing. You've got the best hand cannoneers in the game as well, the extra range. Just absolutely amazing. The taxes as well from both these civs, really good for gold income. Like, I think quite a lot of my late game gold ends up being like, especially if I get three pagodas, it's like 1k passive per minute with these guys, which is amazing. Yeah, it's, it's just solid. Super duper solid. Uh, Zushi, the, the landmark choices. Like, Medigarden start things off. Um... It is kind of nice to get all the landmarks, just because extra, extra sniping can stay alive. But with Zushi, with the temple, is it the Temple of the Sun or the uh, library? I get the one Raiders and the Bombard AoE. I think the other ones, uh, maybe a time and a place, but AoE Bombards is great. And they'll get unlocking Imperial Guard very good. But yeah, I, th I think this is probably how I'd rate the civs right now in FFA. So... Being here doesn't mean you can't win. I won with... I haven't played John yet, but I won with each one of these. I haven't won with Mongol yet. Granted, I've only played a couple of games, but it felt hard. But all, all these, more than viable. But if you do play FFA, you'll meet a lot of these. A lot of these. Ottoman isn't picked as much. But you'll also meet quite a lot of order. They're just solid. Solid, solid, solid. So guys and girls, that was the FFA tier list. Hope you enjoyed it.